So we're talking about mucositis. Yes. And mucositis is the inflammation of that inside tube, of that inside skin from mouth to anus. If I had to imagine a tube, essentially, a tube that runs from my mouth all the way through my body until it's expelled at the end, that tube, the lining of that tube is the mucosal membrane. Mucositis is an inflammation of the tube or the mucosal membrane that runs on the inside of your body. Is it an inflammation of the entire tube? Is it specific sections? How does that present itself? How would I feel that as a patient? Mucositis can develop anywhere on that inside lining. Of course, we can see what's inside your mouth. You can stand in front of a mirror and open your mouth and you can see that it might be red. There might be little ulcers or little sores inside your mouth. You might see your saliva is a lot thicker and stickier than normal. And of course, it's probably quite sore. The chances are what you're seeing there could be all the way down. It's just a lot more tricky to see what's happening in your intestine, for example, with the naked eye. <laughs> It's usually characterized by pain. It's sore. It, it really is sore. It's really uncomfortable and it can stop you from eating properly. When it can be in quite advanced grades, it can stop you from eating and drinking, which then becomes a problem. And the reason why you get mucositis is because those cells are growing really quickly and they're very, very susceptible to many of the cancer treatments like radiation therapy to a particular part of that mucosal membrane or chemotherapy which is absorbed systemically. Chemotherapy works against cells in the body which are growing quickly and your mucosal membrane is growing quickly. The cells are growing very very quickly. Is that why you would sometimes find that a small cut on the inside of your mouth will probably heal quicker than something on the outside Absolutely. of you like on your hand for example? Very Oh, that's interesting. I always wondered about that. So the entire lining is very susceptible to cancer treatments such as radiation therapy or chemotherapy. We are indeed talking about mucositis, which is a side effect of some of the cancer treatments which you may experience. This is a continuation of the series that we've been doing, which approaches all of the potential side effects which you may experience along your journey. Does mucositis present as other symptoms? So for example, if I've got quite an aggressive stage of mucositis, would that then feel like a stomach ulcer? Could it lead to nausea and vomiting? How does it present? You, you just mentioned uh, pain. I think the, the most common presentation of mucositis is pain. It's uncomfortable, it's sore. Sometimes that can progress to not just being sore and inflamed and the, the area looking a lot more red than usual, but you can start noticing little sores, little ulcers appearing, etc. These ulcers can bleed even on occasion. What does that mean for you practically? What it means is that you're experiencing pain. You might not want to eat and drink. It might be difficult in swallowing certain foods. So very hard foods, chewing or foods might be really uncomfortable to the point that even swallowing liquid becomes impossible. So trying to get any nutrition in becomes very, very challenging. And that's why we don't want mucositis to ever progress to that extent. Mucositis can be divided as the World Health Organization that categorizes mucositis into four grades. Grade one is it's red and it's uncomfortable. Grade two, it's red and uncomfortable most certainly, you're still able to eat and drink, but eating is becoming more difficult. A grade three, it's really, really sore. And eating is definitely not possible. And drinking fluid is now becoming an issue. But you can still get fluid into you. A grade four, when any sort of nutrition is just not possible, that's taken by mouth. And then you really need to start looking at rehydrating the patient or you need to be getting nutrition to that patient in other means rather than through the mouth. Through IV lines, etc. Through IV lines, through peg tubes, etc. Well, there's many self-help remedies. And so really trying to look after your mucosal membrane as best as possible, anticipating that it might become problematic because of the treatment that you've had. Having a localized treatment such as radiation therapy would mean that if you're having radiation therapy to your pelvis, that you're going to have a sore mouth. It's in a different area mm. completely. So a localized treatment would have a localized side effect. Mucositis typically seems to be more common with patients undergoing chemotherapy. Can you do mouth goggles, mouth washes, keeping your mouth as clean as possible, 
Sometimes brushing teeth when you have mucositis is jolly uncomfortable. So using a toothbrush, for example, the old hard standard toothbrush that you've had for the last three years, probably a good time to throw it out and get a new soft bristled toothbrush. And if even that's too painful to use, wrapping a piece of gauze around your finger and just cleaning your teeth gently could be managed. I'm assuming mouthwashes would be too uncomfortable at this point. Well, you know, often mouthwashes are prescribed or they're certainly commercially available, but many of them are based on alcohol and that burns like crazy. Mm. So you've already got a sore mouth. Now you're trying to rinse and gargle with a mouthwash that is burning. That doesn't help your healing at all. Sure. We don't want you to be uncomfortable. We don't want you to be sore. We certainly don't want your nutrition or your hydration to be influenced by your ability to swallow. Your ability to heal is largely influenced by your nutrition, so keeping that very, up is vitally important. Really important. There is a very, very simple and cheap, which is wonderful, mm. option of a mouthwash that you can make at home with easy products that we all have in the home. So in a liter of water, and that water must be clean water, so if it's not filtered water, for example, previously boiled and now cooled water, you add half a teaspoon of salt, good old table salt, three heaped teaspoons of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda is another name for it. Three heaped teaspoons of that into a liter of water, mix it up and you can gargle with that very, very safely. There's no limit as to how much you can use. You can gargle every half an hour if you want to quite safely. If you happen to swallow a little bit as well, that's also quite safe, nothing to worry about. So the idea was you would take your freshly made water Please don't drink it out the bottle because if there is an infection in your mouth obviously you're going to contaminate that bottle so decant a little piece out and you gargle with it and you gargle as far back as possible in your mouth and spit out and you repeat that as often as you need it's quite handy to use that mixture just before you're about to eat keep your mouth as clean as possible it also works very nicely for nausea and vomiting as well that feeling of nausea or after you vomited wash your mouth out with that mix it's really, really cheap and easy to make and use. Throw out the remainder of the mixture at the end of the day and make up a new mixture for the next day. That's a, a wonderful at-home remedy to help clean out your mouth. But as you'd mentioned, it's the entire mucosal membrane from mouth all the way down. How would we be able to manage a higher stage that's maybe running the whole way through the system? What are some of the treatments that are available? It's very, very tricky to reach those deeper areas. So it's one thing to manage oral mucositis or mucositis inflammation of the mouth. And you can do the other end as well. You can use that self-same salt and soda mix and pour it into a little tub and get your tail into it. If that end, your anus area, your perianal area is hurting, you can sit in some of that fluid and it's also quite soothing. But trying to get the deeper areas is, is a lot more tricky and for that, you would need the doctor to prescribe something that would be absorbed systemically to assist that mucositis. How long does the symptom last for? How, how long can we expect mucositis to be with us? Mucositis doesn't last for very long. As soon as the treatments are finished, it heals quite rapidly, but it is really debilitating when you have it. And so if you're experiencing that, it's not just the mouthwashes that you should consider, but also take some pain treatment that is prescribed just to take off that edge of the discomfort that you're experiencing. As soon as the symptoms progress and become worse and you are not able to eat or drink, so in other words, your nutritional ability is affected by your mucositis, you need to go back to your doctor and report that because it can be treated very, very effectively, but don't let it get out of hand. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions or suggestions for future content, please leave them in the comments below. For more information and resources on cancer, check out the link in the description and join our community to empower yourself with knowledge. We're here to support you on your journey. Thanks for watching. See you next time.